today. Everybody say, God is good. good. Say, His mercy endures forever. forever. Are you guys ready to receive from the Lord today? You know, the Bible says that your faith, it said, according to your faith, be it done unto you. How many are believing that God's going to speak to you today? Amen. Give you a word in season. God can refresh you. During this time here, direction can come, encouragement can come, revelation can come. I'm just, and miracles can happen. Amen. How many for the Holy Spirit just to just fall in this place? Uh, how many need a touch from the Lord? Maybe you're physically, uh, your body's sore, or maybe there needs to be a healing. How many thank God? God can do that today while the word's going forth. And we welcome the Holy Spirit. So let's just pray. Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the promises of God. Every single one of them is yes and amen. Lord, we count it a privilege and an honor to stand before you today. And we thank you, Lord God, that it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit, says the Lord. So, Lord, today, you know where these precious people are. You know exactly what they need. Lord God, I just pray that you administer way beyond my intellect, way beyond my words. Lord, let your word just permeate our hearts. Let light shine in our spirits, Lord God. Let us see truth, know truth, and be set free by the truth today. And we thank you so much for it. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. amen. Let's put that first slide up. Everybody say, oh! oh. <laughs> now, you got to do that with some gumption in your spirit. Everybody say, oh! oh. <laughs> now, you got to do it a little bit better than that. Everybody say, oh! oh. The Lord is what? Go. Let's go to Psalms 107, verse number 8. We're going to see that. This is in the Bible. Amen. This phrase is right in the scriptures, and we're going to talk about the goodness of God today. God is good. Amen. How often is he good? Does God ever change? No. Is he always good? Yes. Look at the psalmist said. He said, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. See, again, he talks, I kind of paraphrase the thought there. He said, men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. The Lord is good. Amen. Everybody say, God is good. God is good. Amen. Let's go to Psalms 27, verse 13. And we're going to talk about the goodness of God today. We're just going to remind ourselves of how good and how awesome our Lord is. Psalms 27, verse 13 says this. It says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of God or the Lord in where? Now notice that there. He said, he said I would have fainted unless I believed this to be true. To see God's goodness Where? In the land of the living. Are we in the land of the living? <laughs> How many are breathing? We're walking on planet Earth. I know maybe you, you might be looking at your neighbor or your friend, but I don't know if he's here. But I know you and I are on planet Earth, right? And he said, he said, I would have fainted unless, unless I believed to see the goodness of God. Everybody say the goodness of God, goodness of God. in the land of the living. Notice the word for goodness. I want you to see the definition here. Slide number two. God is good. All the time. The word goodness means, there's the Hebrew word, it means good. It means good things. It means goodness. It means beauty. It means joy. It means prosperity. This word, in the, in the Hebrew, they would do like a picture graph of the word. It would kind of like paint a picture of how the word was used. And basically, the word is used like this. It means, it's a picture of a basket, and it means surround the house. The house is surrounded by grace, beauty, love, health, prosperity, something that is functional. Everybody say, God's goodness, God's goodness is, toward is toward me. How many are believing to see that in your life? Everybody say, God, God is, good. is good. Now look with me over to Exodus, the 33rd chapter, and we're going to look at verse number 17. How many remember when Moses, Moses was the, leading the children of Israel out of Egypt? And, and uh, he comes to a certain place. He's like, God, I just need your help here. Lord, you know, show me, show me you. And he says, now therefore I pray thee, if I found grace in your sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. Now let's just skip down to verse number 17. And so he's asking the Lord, so Lord, I, 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 need, I need some confirmation here. I want to know you in a greater way. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. How many are glad God knows us by name? Yes. Verse number 18, it says this. He says, and he said, I will, he said, he said, Lord, I beseech thee, show me your glory. And I think that's the cry of all of us. We're like, Lord, show me your glory, Lord God, show me your glory. Now look at verse number 19. 
And he said, I will make all my what? He asked to see God's glory, and God said, I'm going to make my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. How many thank God that the goodness of God is the glory of God? Yes. Moses wanted to see God's face, and God said, I'm going to show you my goodness. Everybody say goodness. goodness. Everybody say goodness. goodness. Look what it says in Psalms 25, verse number 8. You're saying, well, Pastor Michael, why are you talking about the goodness of God? Because I want you to realize, and we need to shout it from the rooftops, God is good yes. all the time. Yes. God is never bad. Amen. Especially when you get these storms that go through and they go, well, this was an act of God, not my God. Right. How many are glad for that? Amen. He said, good, everybody say good, good. and upright is who? The Lord. the Lord. Everybody say good and upright, good and upright. is what? The Lord. the Lord. He's talking about his nature. He's talking about his character. This who God is. God is good. Amen. Let's look at some other scriptures here. Look what it says here. Look at Psalms 119, verse 68. How many are going to get some faith to believe in the goodness of God? Amen. That's why we're talking about the goodness of God. He said, I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of God. Well, we're talking about the God is good. Look at it says, thou art what? Good. And what does he do? Good. <laughs> I'm going to like that. Yes. Everybody say, God, God. you are what? Good. good. And what does he do? Good. He, does he do good? Yes. Is God a do-gooder? Yes. That's the God that we serve. Some of you are like, I don't believe it. You know, bad things happen. No, I'm telling you, it's not the Lord doing it. Are you guys hearing me today? Look what it says in Psalms 31, verse 19. We just love the Lord. He says, how great, the Psalms 31, 19. How great is what? Is his goodness not only good, but it's great? He said, he said how great is your goodness? which thou hast laid up for who? Them which fear thee. How many fear the Lord today? Yeah. He goes, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Great is his goodness. Yeah. Everybody say, great is his goodness. Great is his goodness. Amen, amen. Look what it says in Psalms 85, 12. You know, the Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three, let every word be established. Amen. I've already given you quite a few here. Yeah. Are, are we seeing that the nature of God is good? Yeah. He says, the Lord shall give you, give that which is good. Yes. Is God a giver of that which is yes. good? Yes, he is. And he says, and our land shall what? Yield her increase. Yes. Isn't that good? Yes. He says, the Lord shall do what? Give that which is what? Good. 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 Look at Psalms 104, 28. This lo it's loaded through the scriptures here. Yes. It's loaded. Loaded. Look at Psalms 104, verse 28. Thou, that thou givest them, oh, I'm sorry, is that, uh, let me see. Okay, that thou givest them that gathereth, look at this, thou openest thy hand, and they are filled with what? Good. What's God's hand filled with? Good. The front row's getting it, I don't know about the rest. <laughs> How many like that? Amen. Look at that in the Amplified, I want you to see it. And we love the word. Amen. He opens his hand and it's filled with good. He goes, he goes, when you give, you give it to them that gather. You open your hand and they are filled. You open your hands and they're filled with good things. You guys like that? Whew, look what it says in Psalms 84, 11. We're getting it today. Woo, we love the Lord. Amen. He says, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to read about that. Woo, look at this. Look at Psalms 103, verse number five. Some of, you, some of you are like, this is too sugary this morning. Well, this is the word. Amen. God is good. Amen. Look at it says, who satisfies thy mouth with what? Good so that thy youth is what? Renewed. Like a what? Eagle. How many like that? Yes. 
God, God's getting a bum rap today. People think he's bad. I'm here to tell you, God is good all the time. He said, who satisfies thy mouth with good things. Notice the word for satisfy. I want you to see it. He doesn't just give you good things. The word satisfy, slide number five, it means to have an excessive amount of something. It means to satisfy a, de- excuse me, satisfy a desire or an appetite to the full till you're totally, completely satisfied. How many like that? Yes. How many got some room for more? Yes. I do. Bless the Lord. What do you do with the extra? Bless people. Yes. Share the goodness of the Lord. You like that? Yes. Whew, look what it says here. Psalms 107, verse 9. We love the word here. Yes. <laughs> Psalms 107, verse... Some of you got to get... He said, I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of God. Why, why am I teaching this? Because some people don't believe God's good. We got to get our faith encouraged and built up. God is so good all the time. He's good God. He's a good father. He loved me. Look at it. It says in Psalms 107, verse 9, it says, okay, I'm sorry, uh, six, uh, Psalm 65, 11. Hallelujah. We love the word here. He says, thou crownest the year with what? What kind of year are you going to have? A good year. <laughs> Some of you are, well, we're going to have a down year because that's what the, the economy is saying. Yep. No. How many know he surrounds, he crowns the year with goodness? Yeah. Look at the word for crown, slide number seven. The whole year. Do you believe that this is the year it's crowned with God's goodness? Yes. Look at what it says. It means the crown means to surround, wrap, to encircle. It means for protection and for attack. And there's God's goodness wards off things and protects us. And we're just blessed. I love it. You guys hearing it this morning? Look at Psalms 33, verse 5. <laughs> I'm just happy. God is good. <laughs> How many are glad we serve this good God? Oh, the Lord is good. Look at this. He, he, Psalms uh, 33, 5. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness. Some of you say, well, how come I'm not seeing the goodness of the Lord in my life? You got to believe. Right. Got to use your faith. Yes. Just like there's a lot of badness out there. How many know God's goodness is here? Yes. It's there. There's a whole other realm. Yes. It's the kingdom realm that we live in. Yes. And you tap in it and I tap in it by faith. Yes. He said the earth is full. Do we live on planet earth? Yes. Is it full of God's goodness? Yes. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I mean, love this. Look at Deuteronomy 28, verse 63. Some of you are like, oh, this is just sugary today. Oh, this, I'm telling you, this is where a lot of people miss it. They think God's bad. I'm here to tell you, God's good all the time. He goes, and it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoices over you to do what? He, he wants to do good. He rejoices over us to do good. That's the nature of God. Let's go on. Let's go on here. Let's go to uh, James, the uh, first chapter, verse 13. Everybody say, God is good. God is good. Say, he's good, he's good to me. All right. He said, let no man say when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God. Now, hear the phrasing here. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth the any man. So God's not the one putting bad stuff on you and me. You guys hearing this? This is very important. Now, does God, you know, uh, does the word try us, the, the trying of our faith, we're standing in faith, we're believing God, that kind of, but God doesn't put evil on it. God, God, it's, it, this is what the scripture says. It says, I am, uh, it says, I, don't anybody say that when you're tempted that God's doing this to me. Because God can't be tempted with evil. So if something's coming your way that's evil, it's not God. The word of God says in John 10, 10, the thief comes but for what? To steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that they what? Have life and have abundantly. So what does the thief come to do? Kill, steal, destroy. That's evil. 
What does God come to do? Life. Are you guys hearing it? He said, let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth thee any man. Now look at that in the message Bible. I want you to see it. How many love the word? Amen. See, this is important because you can't resist something that you believe God gave to you. You can't resist it if you go, well, God's doing this to me. Didn't Jesus say, when the, when the, the Pharisees came to him and said, you're casting out devils by the power of the devil. You're healing people by Satan's power. And Jesus said, you're right. I'm using Satan's power to free people. No, is that what Jesus said? No. He said, no. He said, any kingdom divided against itself can't stand. He said, but if I, by the finger of God, cast out these demons, know that the kingdom of God's coming to you. What was Jesus saying? Sickness is the devil. We're going to see that in a moment. It's not God. Are you guys hearing me? He said, don't let anyone under pressure to give in, give in to evil say, God is trying to trip me up. <laughs> God is impervious to evil and puts evil in no one's way. So let's look at verse number 17 of this same chapter, guys. How many love the word? Amen. I know it's you. This should make you happy. This makes me happy. It's, it's, it's dividing lines. I know, I know where the problem is now. It's not God. You hear people saying, well, the Lord took my baby. The Lord's not taking babies. The Lord put this on me. The Lord ain't putting it on you. Are you guys with me? Amen. That's not God's business. Well, God, now, some people say, well, you know, I ended up in the hospital and, you know, it, it worked out beautiful and I got to minister to people and people got saved. How do you know God will use even though he didn't send it? That's right. Yes. That's right. Yeah. And you'll see that through the scriptures. And we'll, maybe if we get a chance today, we'll get there. Joseph, it wasn't God inspiring his brothers to want to kill him, right, right. throw him in a pit. Right. It wasn't God who inspired Potiphar's wife to try to commit adultery with Joseph. That's evil. We see from the scriptures. It wasn't God who made those, uh, uh, the baker and the butler forget, right? The one the guy that came out forget and Joseph was in prison there. But you know what? God turned it around. He said, what you meant for evil, God turned it around and made it good. And so you might be sitting here saying, well, Pastor Michael, yeah, this isn't God. This is ugly. Yes, but how many know, even if you're in the midst of an ugly situation, as we're going to see, God can turn it around and all things can work together for the good. But don't get confused in thinking. God did this. Are you guys hearing this? God put this on me. God made my wife commit adultery so I can find a beautiful second wife. I know God can work it through. Trust me, right? 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 Oh, yeah. But you can't sit there in your mind and go, well, you know, it all, yeah, all, all things work together for the good, but not all things were God. Right. And that's why God is so awesome and so cool. He can take what the devil's trying, what meant for evil, and God can turn it around and make yeah. it for good. Yeah. And no matter what you're going through today, that's the God that we serve. Yeah. He can turn it around. Yeah. Are you hearing me today, church family? He says, every good gift, excuse me, every, and every perfect gift is from where? From above. And comes down from the Father of lights with whom there's, God, with whom there's what? No variableness and shadow of turn. So he's telling us that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from God. And he says, there, with whom there's no variableness. Look at the word, speaking about God's character. Slide number 15. There's no variableness with God. God is not turning. There's not even a shadow of turning with God. There's no variation with God. He doesn't change. There's no fickle, fickleness. There's, there's, the word they use is transmutation, right? The action of changing or the state of being changed into another form. God is who he is. He said, I am the Lord and I change not. The very core character of God, he is good. All the time. And isn't it cool? And this is the cool thing about it. You and I, when things are starting to come our way, we have a choice. 
We can go, I don't know, the Lord's doing this. Or you can just sit and go, you know, you start resisting the devil, standing against it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And keep your faith up and just be happy to see how God's going to work it out. How many, I mean, yeah, these are real simple examples. I just want to give this one real quick, real, just, just recently. You know, we all, obviously, hurricane came through. And so most of you know that we have a car that's been in the shop, uh, GM. We, it's, a, it's a certified car. It's, it's been in the shop since December. And it's a, it has a, it's a Chevy Volt. So it's a, it's a hybrid, but then it has a battery. It's, it's really... The, Actually, we got a Toyota that's like a down where we can go like 50 miles and just battery alone, and then it goes into a hybrid car, you know. So in December, our car went kaputi, you know, but it was under warranty. And so they told us at that time, they're like, you know, you're not gonna, we can't find that battery. And this car's under warranty. I'm like, it's, it's not that old of a car. How in the world can't you guys don't have the battery here, you know? So the long and short of it is, we've been, we've already went through six rental cars. They've, they've, you know, they just keep changing them out. And so you'll see Jordana with a different car. So the new one that she's driving is this big, big, huge truck. In bear. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big truck. Now, our other car was electric. So they asked us, you know, a couple cars ago, they go, hey, we have a Chevy Blaze. Do you want electric? We go, yeah, sure, because we plug it in and we have no problem with it, you know. So anyways, they gave us this huge truck because they had to take the Blazer back. My wife loved the Blazer. She was like, oh, this is great. You know, she just loved it, you know. And so... The long and short of it was, is so she gets this truck and it doesn't have power seats. And so the seats, when you sit into the seats, my wife, if you see her driving in the street, you won't see her face. You'll just see her knuckles. <laughs> Literally. I mean, that's how, how the seat, it's a big truck, you know? And it's, even for myself, it's big. I don't even like driving it, to be honest with you. I'm like, I, and I drove, I drove bus before. I drove bus, and, you know, I drove class B license, you know, I, I don't even like driving. So, so we get this truck, you know, and so this hurricane thing coming through, and uh, so, Wait, you know. I tried to go back to the blazer. Here, why don't you come over and talk to him? <laughs> and she wanted to go back to the blazer, but they said no. <laughs> so, am I on? Okay. So it was pretty funny because I, caught, I, ha I drove it home that day. And I mean, I love trucks. I am a truck girl from way back. That was my second and third cars were trucks. You know, I really enjoyed it. But, um, but this one really is humongous. It hardly, it doesn't even fit in a parking space. It's too long for the parking spaces. Anyway, so I drove it home and I called him back up and I go, oh, is there any way I can get a blazer again? Please give me a, that EB blazer. And, and she goes, well, next time around, when this truck miles out and you have to bring it back in, or if they sell it while I'm driving yeah, it, which is what too. their practice is, um, I said, okay. <laughs> and so she said, but next time. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll deal with this truck. And so in a way, I was disappointed, you know, and it's, a, it's, it's not the greatest vehicle to drive for me, but then... So this, this hurricane <laughs> thing goes through, and so, you know, we were doing pretty good, you know, and so our power did go out, like about 8.30 at the night, but our house was really cool enough, so we really didn't notice it too much because we, we put the air condition down low, and we were just, you know, whatever, and we're just, you know, our, our wires are underground, so we're thinking it's going to be coming on soon, that was our thought, you know. So it didn't, so all night it didn't come on, so, and, but in the morning, I'm laying in bed, and I had this thought, you know. My mind went back to a commercial. I remember seeing those Chevy trucks, you know, it's a big Silverado, where they're showing them powering up a house and people plugging into these trucks, you know. And so I said to myself, I said, you know, I got up, I, I didn't even tell her, she's still in bed. I got there, and I go, you know what, I got to see if that truck has some plugs on it, you know. And sure <laughs> Sure enough, that truck had about six outlets in it. So we're plugging in our refrigerator, charging our phone, whatever. You're saying, well, Pastor Michael, what, what, are you, what are you saying? The thought I'm saying is this, it worked for our good. Yes. Even though it was like she didn't want the truck, and it was kind of like, yeah, this is too big for her to drive. But God, yes. worked, it worked for our good. Yes. And so here's another story. So the power comes on. It came on about 12, 30, 1 o'clock the next day. And so we're like, okay, this is cool. And all of a sudden, our air condition, we've never had a problem with our air condition. We, kept, we got this default cold. kept coming up, you know. And it was saying there's no communication to the outside air condition, yada, yada, yada. And so we called our air condition guy, the guy that services the churches, and then there, uh, our, our, somebody else that we knew, the air condition guy, we called him. 
We couldn't get anybody on the phone. Couldn't get anybody. And so we're just sitting there, and I'm, 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 look, I'm Google searching. How many are thankful for Google? And I'm trying to figure out, maybe there's something here. There's a default call. What can I do? What can I do? And so we're waiting for the call back, you know? And usually our air conditioning guy, as soon as he sees this Jordana, they're great people. They, they respond quickly or call back. Nothing. Uh, Joe. So, so we're sitting there. So about an hour and a half goes by. The other guy didn't call back. We're sitting there. And we're waiting on it. So finally, I said, Jordana, honey, I said, just call Joe one more time. Call him one more time. And she says, I don't want to leave another message. I go, no, 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 no. If, 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 does, if the answer machine, so don't leave a message. But if, who knows, maybe he'll pick up this time. Sure enough, he picks up the phone. He goes, oh, man, we're buried. You know, we're out here in, uh, you know, wherever they were. They flooded. <laughs> and we're like, no, we totally understand. He says, Jordan, I could probably help you guys on Monday, you know. And, and in our, we're all, like, good spirit about it. We're not complaining. I mean, that's what you got to do during those storms. Just kind of keep your lip closed and you keep trusting God. And he, and he goes, yeah, Jordana goes, like, we get this fault about no communication. He goes, well, maybe it's something with the flow sensor or whatever, you know. And so Jeremy's online looking there or whatever. And I go, you know what, I'm going to go vacuum out the water out of the AC. So I went out there and I did that and I turned, turned the power off over there. And, you know, all of a sudden the power, it came on. And usually it would come on and it would shut off after about two minutes. And it came on and it didn't shut off. <laughs> now you say, well, what's this it got to do with anything, Pastor? Here I am sitting there, right, in the midst of this. None of our guys are calling us back. We're waiting an hour and a half. We're sweating in our house. We're hoping to get some sort of something, right? But we just waited it out. And that time worked for us. And it saved us probably about a couple hundred dollar, two hundred right. right. bill. With some comes. Here we were. You know, we're thinking this is ugly. This is bad. Nobody's responding to our call. We weren't saying that. None of us were saying that. You could say it if you want to, but none, we're busy. We understand people have issues going on. But the point was, it was working for us. And God, when he, he mentioned that thought on the phone, I said, man, I got to go out there. I went back. And it worked. Could the thing that you're going through right now, God's got something. Even though you might not like it right now, there's something working. Yes. Yes. How do all things are working together for the good? Yes. Time is working for your good. Delays are working for your good. Hindrances are working for your good. That's the God that we serve. He is good all the time. You might not understand what's going through right now. You're like, but just take a deep breath. No, God's in control and he's good. Are you hearing me? This is what you got to do. Be cool. Just take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. And when you start living this way, you start living in the, the realm of the unseen and you're rejoicing, even though things naturally are here, but you just know God's got it already figured out. I mean, just, just again, another third story. We, we have solar panels on our house. So uh, underneath, because we were having, the re, uh, so we were having problems with raccoons. We live by water. And so these little raccoons, you know, they were nesting under the solar panels. And so we... Our, uh, we called a guy, and so he came out and got rid of the raccoon. I said, man, I can't. I don't want these raccoons under my solar panels no more. <laughs> I'm ready to put bob wire around my house, you know. And so I said, let's. And so I said, he goes, well, we can put, there's a, there's a thing you could put underneath it, right, so they, they can't crawl. So we did. Me and Jordan I put that under there. We're, we're excited. We put, we're doing our part. We're trimming our trees. We're trying, you know. So then all of a sudden, we didn't see any raccoons for a while. And they're like, last week, and these raccoons, they don't pay any taxes, but they act like they own your house. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, our, the, the previous raccoon for the other problem, I mean, you'd see him crawl on the fence. Huh, it was almost like clockwork. He'd climb up on a lanai, he'd look over at us, wave at us, <laughs> walk into the, and just, it was like, While we were, out, we're outside, we're outside, and he's just out there giving us the peace sign, goes up on the roof. <laughs> I'm like, if you're going to do that, I want money, money, yeah, yeah. money, money. We, we need, you, you need to do so. So anyway, so this new raccoon, all of a sudden we saw it climb up, because we cut the tree over there, the, the other one was going up. And he's climbing up the pool, and I, he's going right up the thing. And we're watching him. So I don't know, that's weird. So then all of a sudden, earlier this week, I know these are silly stories, but I just, we, I just, I'm trying to encourage you. So we're sitting, go, we're sitting in, the, in the house, and right about 8 o'clock, we hear this, this loud noise loud noise it sounded like something was in our wall it was it was like loud and we, we go to the bedroom we're like what in the world is, what is this you know so we go outside and we have our porch and then there's 
there's the, where the soffit comes, and then there's this little space. And we could see it was tore off. So the raccoon was coming in, into the house, just, you know, making him, he made himself a home, you know. So now we're sitting there, and, we're, you know, we're, we're just, every, every night about 8 o'clock, we're hearing, you know, whatever he's doing, you know, blah, 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 whatever, loud, you know. And, and does anybody get the, has anybody had a critter in your house who just, yeah. does anybody like that? No. Does it kind of make you feel uncomfortable? Yeah. Yeah. Violated? I, I, to me, it makes me feel violated. I'm like, what's this thing doing in my house? What, I hope he's not chewing on something, you know? And you're, you're, you're getting thoughts, bad thoughts come to your head at that time. You're thinking, what can I do, you know? What am I going to do to this thing, <laughs> right? You start thinking, you know, marshmallows with things in it, whatever. You just, whatever you got to do. You, but, I, you know, we're trying to be humane here, you know? So, so, all of a sudden, so of course, our, ra- our raccoon guy, he's like, the hurricane comes through. We're like, man, we're stuck, man. This, you know, he can't get out for a few days. We got a hole right here, you know, and again, I'm I'm, I'm calculating in my head. Well, this is going to be X amount of dollars, you know. We got to fix this, you know. Got to call the guy. Blah, blah, blah. So he couldn't come out, and t- we thought he was going to come out on Friday, but he couldn't come Friday. So then Saturday, I said, "Honey, let's just reach out to him again and see where he's at." He, he goes, "Well, I'm, I got to pick up a trap in your ear. I'll come there and look at it." He comes over and he looks at it. Nicest guy. He looks over at the thing. And he goes, "Oh man," he goes, "I, I thought that might have happened to you guys." I go. We're like, I'm like, inside I'm doing this. Like, what are you talking about? He goes, when I did your solar things, I was concerned about those things over there. And he goes, I should have sealed it better when I was doing it. And I'm, I'm just, we're just listening to him talk. He goes, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put tape there on the opening, see if he's inside, yada, yada, yada. If he's inside, yada, yada, we'll, we'll, we'll get a trap. But I'm going to come out. And he says, I'm going to put, I'm going to patch that up for you. So I'm just bracing myself, you know. Does anybody have the old brace yourself? Oh, yeah. What is this going to cost? <laughs> He goes, I'm going to do it for, for free. I'm going to take care of it. What are you saying, Pastor Michael? All things work. And not that we wanted it for free. I told Jordana, we got to go to the, we don't have cash in the house. Get some cash in the house because I want to give the guy something. If he's going to come out and do it, I want to I pay him, you know. But the point of the matter is, is here we are. It was yucky. You get this feeling. And again, this is, some of you can relate to it in a different way. Some of you are not going through raccoon problems. Some of you are not going through, you know, electricity. Pro- but God is working. Yes. And you and I need to get excited because God already, already has it figured out. Yes. Yes. He's already got the answer. It's all, you don't have to. God's not going to invent something. It's already there. It's already done. And what you and I got to get and do, do is just get in faith and go, Lord, I thank you that you are good. Yes. And that you're working all the time for me. And you get in faith and you get excited and you see, all of a sudden you start to see God starting to show up and do things for you going, hey, Michael, I knew that you were going to need that electric truck that your wife doesn't really enjoy driving right now, but you're going to need it so that you're not going to lose your food. Are you guys hearing that? How many can believe that God is in control of your path and your destiny and knows our open doors? That's what I always told my kids. I said, listen, guys, a closed door is a good door. Unless you feel like, oh, I got to push through it. Sometimes a no is a positive thing. Because how many know God has better for you? That's how I raised my boys. I said, listen, God's got the best for you. Are you hearing me? You guys doing good? Yes. All right. Ah, oh, yeah, it was good. Let me see. Oh, my, my timer didn't go off. It's still zero, so I guess <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I pushed it. I thought it would go on. Okay. All right. Well, let me just, we've been quoting that scripture, and I, I got more to say on this, but I, I, I think, we're, I think the, the spirit of what I wanted to share today is, I want, is what we, we shared. I, I felt like I just want to encourage you. Because he said, I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of God. God is good. Yes. And look at Romans 8, 28 there, guys. Let's just look at that. We'll close with this, guys. You guys are doing awesome. The Lord is good all the time. Some of you are sitting in a bad spot right now, but how many of God's, God's got it all figured out? He goes, and what? We know. How many are in the know? That only good things work together for the good. <laughs> That's the God that we serve. He can take your junk, your mistakes, your goofs, 
your faults, your failures, what the devil sends. He could take even the good things, right? The good things, that I, he could take it all together and he's the only one who can turn it around and work it together for good. Yes. Are you guys hearing this? Yes. This is the God that we serve. Yes. Can you believe by the grace of God that no matter right now, where you are right now at this point, say, Lord, I just thank you that this is working together yes. for my good. Yes. All things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. How many can say that right now? Yes. You're like, but Pastor Michael, you don't understand. It's, it's hard and I get in a ton of closed doors and things don't make sense. This is where your faith kicks in. You just lift up your hands and say, God, thank you. Yes. I don't understand it all, but you understand it all. You are Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You see and you know all things, and this is working together for my good. Glory to God! That's the God that we serve! Are you guys hearing it? Hallelujah. Let's just bow our heads right now. Let's just, let's just seal this time, consecrated unto the Lord. Hallelujah. There's, I mean, I, I, I did a, I, I'm just kind of was hitting things, you know, just pow, 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 you know. But my heart is like, did you get it? Did... God is so good. God is so good. And you know, the Bible says, blessed are the, the gospel of good things. That's what the gospel is. Gospel is good news. And you may be sitting here today and you're like, well, Pastor Michael, I've never made Jesus the Lord of my life. Well, that's where it starts. That's where it starts. God calls the foolish thing. God calls the, the weak to make it strong. Somebody says, well, I'm a good person. I mean, I'm going to go to heaven, right? I'm a good guy. The only way that you're going to go to heaven is based on what Jesus said. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you've never called on the name of the Lord, you've never surrendered your life to him, those that are watching, those that are here, this is the day to do it with heads bowed, eyes closed. If you've never done that, just slip up your hand. Nobody's going to embarrass you. Say, Pastor Michael, I want to today give my life to Jesus. I'm, I'm reminded when I was a 16-year-old boy, kind of out there doing my own thing, partying, acting crazy, lost. And all of a sudden, God started to speak to me. And I could see my life was going a wrong way. And God was like, here, I got something better for you. And I remember surrendering my life to Christ. Say, Lord, here it is. And anything that's good in my life is basically because of Christ. There's nothing. It's him. He's, he's good. And if you've never made that commitment, those that are here, those that are watching, just, I'd like to let Jesus be the Lord. Say this prayer with me. Say this. Say, dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ, he died on the cross for me, that Jesus, you were buried and you rose from the dead. And today, I turn from myself, turn from my sins, and I turn to you, and I make you the Lord of my life, and I receive right now the life, the power, being born again. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. But if you're here today and you're a believer, if you're a believer, this is what I want you to do. I want you to just, as God's been inspiring and encouraging you, lift up your chin. Hey, we're going to sing a song right now, and I want you to just rejoice in God's goodness. Can you do that this morning? Just say, Lord, I just know you're in control. You got this. Everybody say, God, you got this. God, you got this. Say, you got it, God. You are good. 